Welcome to DevOps mock interview part four. In today's session, we are going to discuss two questions of mock interview and see how to answer them. If you are also interested in the mock interview, you can email me at the email ID that you see on the screen. And I take mock interviews. The prices are very less for each mock interview session. So don't hold back. If you're preparing for your job and want to take DevOps mock interviews, email me right now. Let's start the session and see what's the first question. The first question is from the domain Docker. And the question is, can we write Docker Compose file in JSON? If yes, will the below command work fine or will it fail? The command is docker compose hyphen f docker compose dot json dot top. <clears throat> this can be asked in the interview. And if you have mentioned Docker in your resume, and if you have been using Docker Compose to spin up Docker containers, if you have not used Docker Compose at all, you can answer, of course, that you have not used it. And you can take a second guess saying it might work. But usually for any profiles that we're interviewing for DevOps, Docker Compose is a very basic concept. And we expect that these concepts are very well aware for our DevOps engineers. So what are Docker Compose files usually written off? Let's try to understand that. But before that, take five seconds to guess your answer and keep your answer in your mind. So what's your answer? Well, let me share my answer with you. Yes, you can write Docker Compose file either in JSON or YAML. YAML is the famous way of writing Docker Compose file and which is what we are taught in most cases. But YAML is a superset of JSON, meaning if you write something in YAML, it can be converted to JSON and it's still valid. Especially if you are speaking of the Docker Compose file, it does take the file format of both YAML and JSON. So how do I answer this question in the interview? You can answer like this. Yes, we can use YAML format to prepare our Docker Compose file. Meaning the command that you shared with me will work fine because YAML is a superset of JSON. And hence, if you write this in JSON or YAML, it is totally valid. So to answer your question, writing Docker Compose file in JSON or YAML doesn't matter. Both are valid and both are proper way of representing our doc file or Docker Compose file. Let's go to the next question. The next question is coming from the domain AWS. The question is, what is AWS Aurora? What kind of RDS do your project use? Speak a bit about DB failures with respect to Aurora DB. So this is an in-depth question about database. And here, the interviewer is also trying to ask your experience around databases, especially in cloud. This does look like a tricky question because they are expecting you to share some experience. But let's see how you answer. Take five minutes, five seconds to prepare your answer in your mind. Okay, let's see what's the answer for this. Now, if you have worked with Aurora, only then try to answer this. If you have not worked with Aurora, then try to answer something like this. I am aware that Aurora database is one of the serverless database given to us by AWS, but I have not used it in this project. So I might not be able to explain a bit more about my work experience with Aurora. Okay, now if you have worked with Aurora, then you can give an answer something like this. Aurora is a serverless database. And currently in our projects, we have a few of them running both in staging and live. Now Aurora, the reason why we have shifted to Aurora is because it is completely maintained by AWS and offers us a lot of support in terms of configuration, management, scalability, and disaster recovery. Aurora database failures, which you also stressed upon, is completely handled by AWS because at any given point of time, Aurora automatically maintains six copies 
of the data across the availability zones and will automatically attempt to recover your database in a healthy availability zone which has no data loss. Meaning your data has been copied six number of times in different availability zones in your region. So it's almost disaster proof. It is unlikely, in, in, in case it is unlikely event your data is unavailable with Amazon Aurora storage itself, you can restore your DB from the snapshot using point in time restore methodology in Aurora. So this is how you can explain a bit more about Aurora and also share your experience about Aurora database. So this is it for this video, my friends. If you have any questions in your mind, which you want me to answer, leave a comment below and please like and subscribe because I'm going to publish more videos like this on a daily basis so you can keep on following with me. Thanks a lot for this session. Speak to in the next session of DevOps mock interviews.